Gus thought he was clear and he was not clear. I mean, the truck race, people were aggressive, but nobody just cleared themselves down. I mean, I did. The entire truck race, people were very aggressive, but I don't know. I mean, Gus is supposed to have the most experience here. Um, he's supposed to be the veteran of the team, but I don't know. I have no idea what he was doing. Um, it was a stupid move. Hey there, NASCAR fans. Today, we're diving deep into the action-packed drama that unfolded at the Daytona International Speedway. The thrilling race of both NASCAR Truck Series and Arca Menard Series witnessed high-voltage clashes on the track, especially the most talked about, between Venturini Motorsports driver Tony Breidinger and Gus Dean. Buckle up, fans, as we dive deep into the incident and what Breidinger had to say about it. Now, if you've been following NASCAR, you know that Daytona is always a roller coaster of emotions. But this year, the excitement reached a whole new level with some unexpected twists and turns. We had Tony Bradinger, the rising star of Arca Menard series, making her debut in the truck series. The up and coming female racing talent and Victoria's Secret model put in a double shift on NASCAR's season opening weekend at the Daytona International Speedway. She was riding high on anticipation, but her dreams took a hit when a mix-up with her teammate sent her spinning out of contention. The Arca sensation was riding the hype train, heading to Daytona, and promising fans a blitz. However, in an unfortunate turn of events, her truck series debut fell well off the chart, as an implosion with her teammates squashed her dreams, dropping her from the middle of the pack towards the tail end. Making her truck series debut in the number one Toyota Tundra, riding the hype train, was the 24-year-old sensation. Coming off a stellar ARCA campaign and eyeing a decisive one in her part-time commitment with the Toyota stable. And to be fair, the lady driver was actually doing great, riding up to the 14th spot in what looked like a stellar run until a late tangle with her teammate Dean Thompson in lap 86 got the youngster away from the goal. Tony Breidinger and Dean Thompson got into each other after Mason Massey slowed down in the front ending both of the drivers' Daytona dreams with a sour aftertaste. As per reports, Massey had sparks flying from his truck after Dean Thompson tried to push him, but that didn't work, and eventually he got spun around with teammate Tony Breidinger. Manchez will try to work both, oh, oh. trouble! And there's a crash! Caution is out, the race is over! Trucks up in the air, Nick Sanchez leading when the caution flag came out. And as if that wasn't enough, adding to her misery even further, her ARCA race at Daytona ended in a similar fashion. Breidinger was again betrayed by her own Venturini Motorsports teammate. This time, it was ARCA Menard's race winner Gus Dean who was involved. His contact with Leland Honeyman triggered a chain reaction that sent Breidinger's car into a spin and out of the race. That's the, that's the 25 of Tony right in the middle. Let's see if she, she gets squeezed. So I, I think the O2 got a got a push there and wiggled down the racetrack and then they just kind of squeezed and touched on corner entry to one. Really tough part of the corner, the car is really light. A small push when you're racing that close, you know, only a few inches door to door uh, generates some contact. Yeah, and the majority of these cars involved, nothing, nothing they could do. There Tony gets into the 97 of Jason Kitzmiller. And everybody else is just checking up, trying to miss yeah. it. I mean, half doing the their best to try to miss it. See the 28 on the right Ooh. side of your screen spinning around. That's Shane Van Gisbergen. Yeah, so when that, that push got delivered to the 55, I mean, Tony, you can see by the lines on the racetrack, she was holding her car dead straight. Just uh, got a push. That 02 car came down the racetrack and, and shoved her into the inside lane, and then everyone else is involved. While she did not say anything much after the truck series exit, Breidinger didn't hold herself back after the same thing happened to her in Arca. A visibly upset Tony Breidinger didn't mince words post-race, calling Dean's move unnecessary and criticizing his lack of respect for fellow racers. She stands here and says, I am so annoyed. Talk about it. Yeah, I'm trying to be nice since the 55 is my teammate, but definitely is disappointing. It's so early on in the race, really unnecessary move. It's unfortunate he has a lack of respect for his teammates and other people on the track that work really hard to get here when his dad's just writing the check. So I think that just has to do with his lack of respect. Uh, Venture Motorsports brought me a fast car. Um, Celsius was on board. It, Started off amazing, uh, great qualifying effort. Jake Finch, my uh, teammate in the 20 car, did a great job in qualifying. We worked together. Um, so yeah, just disappointing that the 55 had to just kind of ruin that for all of us.
Now let's break down what went wrong for Breidinger and her team at Daytona. It seems like there was some serious miscommunication and questionable decision-making happening within Venturini Motorsports. Teamwork is crucial in racing, and when that trust is broken, it can have devastating consequences. Breidinger and her teammates found themselves at odds, with selfish moves costing them valuable points and positions. I've not talked to him, but it's just unfortunate because he took out Chris, our other teammate. We're both going full time in the season. Gus is just pulling up for a couple of races because his dad is riding the track. So it's just frustrating that he has a lack of respect for, I mean, he wrecked a few other people. I was talking to one of the guys in the ambulance and I mean, everybody worked so hard to get here. So for him to do that on lap three, I don't, I don't even know why he was going three wide. I mean, I don't know why he would leave me in the middle in the first place. It's a different conversation. This outburst also sparked debate among fans with some supporting her frustration and others suggesting a misinterpretation of Dean's solemn motivation. With everything that happened on the track, ARCA genius Bill Venturini is in a spot now to figure out the team dynamics after all the internal chaos unfolded at Daytona. Though Gus Dean achieved his dream at Daytona with an emotional victory in the ARCA Menard series opener, a tribute to his late grandfather, the Champagne Showers, sparked controversy and the claims of selfishness ignited within the legendary Venturini Motorsports team. The crux of the controversy lies in the final lap teammate restart strategy. This maneuver, where the leader sacrifices the advantageous bottom line for their teammate, hinges on trust and mutual benefit. Number 55, Dean and number 20. Jake Finch, teammates at Venturini, had successfully used this strategy throughout a race filled with crashes and controversies. However, on the final restart, Dean breached the agreement. He held on to the precious lead, leaving Finch exposed and vulnerable, ultimately leading to a crash in the final turn. Finch, understandably, felt betrayed and furious. Uh, I guess we just got super selfish there um, on the bottom and wrecked his teammate. Even like we had our plan, you know, going up to it. And, uh, you know, when we got to the restart box, supposed to, he kind of fired before me. And then, you know, the, the restart before that, you know, it was pretty simple. I got down and, and it was all good and he kind of let me in. And this time I caught, was caught by surprise, you know, because he just kept going. And I was like, well, damn, I guess he's not going to gonna let me in. And I tried to side draft him and um, down the back stretch just got, you know, I think there was just a bunch of big head of steam and I tried to side draft going into three. And, got hit and here I am talking to you. These incidents with Breidinger and Finch caused a team-wide chaos at Daytona for Venturini Motorsports. Now with all the track drama, can the Toyota drivers settle their differences between them and work together for a better tomorrow? Another question that arises, can Venturini Motorsports mend their rifts and reclaim their legacy of teamwork and success? Only time will tell. Stay tuned for more race updates and interesting stories from the world of NASCAR. Don't forget to hit that like button, share and subscribe. Until next time, keep the conversation going on Lucky Dog on Track.